I'm gonna kick your ass. I'll kick his ass. Someone's gonna kick his ass. Come here, I'm gonna kick your ass. And I also have the authority to kick your ass. Maybe I ought to tie that long hair on your head to the short hair on your ass and kick you down the street. You two take turns kicking each other's asses. And the second I see some ass, I'm kicking it. For your next trick, why don't I kick your ass? Cause I wanna know whose ass to kick. I'm gonna kick your ass. Or I'll step over this hedge and kick your ass. I'm gonna kick this guy's ass over the phone. I will kick his ass. Prepare for an eternity of me kicking your ass. I'm gonna kick your ass. I'll kick your ass up one side of the street and down the other. Move aside unless you want me to kick your ass. I don't know what the heck's going on here, but someone needs to get their asses kicked. I am going to kick their asses. I think it's time to build a new pad. So yes, I am planning on building a new pad, and it's going to be a travel pad. For anyone who doesn't know, a travel pad is kind of like a small dance pad that you can travel with, uh, maybe fit it in a suitcase. It's got the full center panel, but the panels around the edge are cut off, they're like slimmer. so. Um, it's really only the places that you step on with like a modern stamina form. Now, the main reason why I want to do this is because I really think this time I have enough parts that I can build this thing really cheaply. So it's going to be very small cost to actually build this. I did say the exact same thing last time with my other pad, uh, and that ended up being really expensive. But... I, I really believe it this time. Now for anyone who doesn't know, I have uh, four dance pads now. Two of them are part of a In the Groove 2 Dedicab. Uh, one is a DDR pad that I converted to use FSRs. And the other one is one that I built from essentially scratch using some existing arcade parts. And there's a whole video series on that one. But as you can imagine, each one of these pads weighs hundreds of pounds. They're not something that you can move around the house easily. This travel pad will be something that, um, you know, if I'm taking a vacation, I just took a vacation to Brazil for a few weeks, uh, it would have been awesome to take a pad with me in my suitcase. Even pro probably more practically, I'd like to play ITG in other rooms in my house other than my basement once in a while. You know, there's a lot of reasons for that. I mean, it gets dry down here, and it's pretty cold in the basement sometimes. Uh, sometimes it gets humid in the basement in the summer. And uh, I have some other rooms in my house that are really cool. And, uh, you know, I have a big game room with a pool table and a bar and a game table and a couch and a TV. And, yeah, it would be kind of fun to be able to play an ITG set in my game room once in a while. So the goal of this project is to build a pad that I can take anywhere in my house and play an ITG set. Like any project, there's a lot of different ways to build a travel pad. And there's a lot of very rudimentary travel pads that work very well. But I really want to use arcade parts. I'm kind of in love with using arcade parts. I love the way they feel. Uh, and I want all these pads to feel the same. So I, I just wanted to uh, make a couple notes of some of these travel pad projects. So first of all, one of the best travel pad projects that's out there right now is uh, Sujit's travel pad. It's very well documented. He explains every pro part of building this pad. He even adds the uh, 3D printed files. And it's all built with like pretty basic tools. The only thing that's a little bit iffy is he like laser cut his wood base. You know, you got to find a shop that has a laser cutter, but the good news is that you just you just give them the file and they cut the whole thing for you in, in exactly the right dimensions. Another one is Build This Travel Pad by Bandit. Very good, simple travel pad that you can build. But the absolute best travel pad that I've seen, in my opinion, is NATO's. NATO built one. Uh, it is just beautiful. It has you know, an extruded aluminum base. Everything just bolts together. It has a beautiful lighting system. Uh, really, I, I'm in love with NATO's pad. And uh, if he was selling them, I would buy one. Uh, and it wouldn't have to be cheap for me to want to buy one. It's, uh, yeah, that thing is uh, sexy. 
But, you know, I'm going to forge my own path. And because I have so many pads now, I, I really want things to be consistent across all of them. I want the, I want a similar feel across pads. Uh, so I want a very heavy-duty arcade experience that I can move around my house. So how am I going to do this? I want to build this travel pad around an existing center panel support and center panel off of a DDR or ITG cabinet. Now when I was building the last pad, I asked all sorts of people, do you have center panel supports? Do you have center panels? And uh, over time people said, yeah, I got some laying around, I'll sell them to you. So I think I have like four uh, extra center panel supports and I have one extra, and I have like three extra center panels. So my plan is to take one of these center panel supports, chuck it on a uh, a base of some kind, and uh, then the center panel goes on top of that. Then I have uh, the switch frame. The switch frame uh, normally holds one panel, and I have two extra ones, but they're full size for full size panels, which I don't want to use. So what my plan is, is to actually cut these uh, switch frames in half so that they're four smaller switch frames. And then I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to put those around, and then now I'll be able to hold my panels down. So at this point, I'm like pretty close to having a frame of a pad. I'll need something to hold the sensors, um, and I think my 3D printer is going to come into play there. But finally, the panels themselves, I don't know if you remember, but when I ordered that stuff from Tap Plastics uh, before, they screwed up the cuts for the big pad that I have. So I have all this extra polycarbonate that is the exact same thickness. So I'm going to try to use that and uh, cut my own uh, thin panels with, uh, somehow, I, I've never cut polycarbonate before, so it's going to be an adventure. And lastly, I, I want to have some lights in this thing. Um, not that I think that a, a travel pad has to have lights. I feel like I should be able to do it without too much trouble. So there are some challenges with my approach. Uh, the first is that uh, octagonal panels are going to be a little tricky. Uh, that's because I'm cutting the switch frame in half. That means that one half of my switch frame is going to have right angles. And this is going to set me up really well to do traditionally square panels, something like SMX, where the panels on the inside are completely square and there's not that uh, angled cut that makes the panel an octagon. Doing that would be much easier, but I want to have octagonal panels because I want there to be a space in between like up and left and up and right. So that means that I have to make my own 3D printed piece that is going to, you know, take up that space that, you know, my foot has to slide over. You know, it's not easy because uh, I have to be able to step on that thing too. So it's got to be kind of strong. Um, and then finally, like routing all the wires is going to be very tricky. Uh, if you remember on my custom built full size pad, that was all wired along the bottom because there were leg levelers that raised the pad off of the ground. But with what I'm designing here, this is going to be a completely flat base that sits directly on a flat surface. It will not have leg levelers and thus there's no place to run wires on the bottom. So yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is I wanted to kind of introduce my project, but I also wanted some help from you guys. There's a couple things I'm not really sure about yet and I wanted to poll the audience on what is a good idea or bad idea. So the first question is what should I make the base out of? My first inclination was to make it out of some plate steel. That's what I did on my custom pad and it worked very well. Not only is steel strong and relatively flat, it's not too expensive, but the best thing about it is that you can drill a hole right through it and then you can tap it. So anywhere you need a bolt, you just drill a hole, tap it, and you got a threaded hole for your bolt. I, I really love that about steel. I just Googled uh, some calculators online for the weight of steel and it would be really, really heavy. Steel isn't going to work out. So then I was looking at aluminum and aluminum would do it. A thick slab of aluminum, if I could find one for the right price, I would do that. But uh, aluminum is crazy expensive in, in that form factor. So mm, I don't think I'm going to do that. So then it's like to the wood products. Now w with wood, you really have to deal with warping over time. It's uh, There's a lot of things that, are, that go into that. And over time by itself, it'll warp. But in humid environments, it warps more. 
Uh, and, you know, if you get sweat on it, uh, that could make that worse. They are these composite products that warp less. Um, they don't have that stress in the wood. These are things like melamine, OSB, uh, zip sheeting. It's like chopped up pieces of wood that are kind of glued back together. And then like the final tier of that is uh, uh, MDF, which is just kind of like glued together sawdust. That stuff won't warp over time, but it is extremely sensitive to moisture and humidity, which, you know, you might be able to get around by giving it a good paint job and stuff. Or the real downside with that is it's really not very strong in like a small area where you have to hold a bolt to it. So I could take like some OSB or melamine or MDF and put an insert nut into it and then put my bolts through it. I don't think that connection would be the strongest and it really wouldn't hold up well against water. Another idea I was thinking about was uh, a plastic base. I was looking into like some different types of uh, rigid plastic. Like think about like a cutting board. I talked to the guys at Tap Plastics and they recommended this thing called Starboard. It's uh, used for marine applications. It's very strong and you can use insert nuts with it. Uh, but I also looked at that. It was about the same price as aluminum. It's pretty expensive. So, mm. so I've kind of like you know, come around, back around to plywood. And I think what I'm going to do is just go get some really high quality, like birch plywood. I know there are grades of plywood and then there's like, you know, there's like the shitty stuff that's at Home Depot. And then there's like some good stuff you can get that's very expensive, but I only need like a two foot by two foot piece. So, you know, I'll, I'll go out and get like the Gucci of plywood or whatever and, uh, make sure it's pretty flat. And, um, I can put insert nuts in there. If you've never seen an insert nut, it's like, uh, I'll show a picture on screen, but you, you screw this like nut into the wood. It bites in on the outside and you can put a bolt through it. And that's how I'll hold everything down to the frame. So yeah, my plan is to go with plywood, but if you guys have any other thoughts, please let me know. So the next thing I wanted some help with was what's the best way to play Stepmania portably? My first inclination was to, uh, you know, get like an Android version of Stepmania and then have it on my phone and I could just plug a USB into my uh, phone as like the joystick somehow and play on the go like that. I think that would be really cool, but uh, there's so many weird problems with that. Like the first is that like I don't think Android actu actually has a build of Stepmania that runs on it, even if it does. It's probably really tricky to configure and get sim files running on it. Uh, you still need like a keyboard or something to enter things. Uh, and uh, the way I, the FSR software works that I have, you need another computer to set the thresholds and that gets reset when you unplug it. E so uh, <laughs> then I was thinking about like, I have all these Raspberry Pis. I have a few Raspberry Pis that from like other projects I've done. I also have a few like, um, little media computers. They're not like super powerful, but you know, I feel like they could run Statmania pretty well. But um, you know, and they're they're small. But you know, I gotta plug them into power. Uh, I need a monitor. I need a keyboard, and uh, I need a way to hold all that stuff up. So I keep coming back to the easiest way to play Statmania portably is probably just like a gaming laptop. Now I don't have one of those. I could go buy a cheap one, but. Um, I have an older, like, eight-year-old MacBook Pro, so I might, like, try to just use that. But <clears throat> if anyone has, like, a fun idea for, like, you know, something under, like, a few hundred bucks, that would be, like, a, a neat way to play Stepmania portably that I'm not thinking of, please let me know. So that's really it. That's what I'm planning to do. Um, it's going to take a little while for me to get all this going. Um, I'm really just in the planning stages now, so it'll be a while until I get through the entire process. So yeah, if you're interested, uh, please subscribe, and I'm looking forward to anyone in the comments who has any thoughts on the design or my plans here. Uh, totally open to making changes. It's a lot easier to get that feedback now than like you know when the project is actually done. <laughs> so thanks in advance. See you later.